It actually is making too much horsepower. What in the French toast? All you young guys, carburetors are easy. They really are. Hey everybody, so we're here dynoing a nitrous engine conversion for Guy Thomas down in Alabama. And so he's setting up the engine. We converted it to a F2 non-intercooled blow through carburetor on pump gas. So we're just getting ready to get going on this thing. I honestly, I gave the, I, I assigned Kyle this job and he is like freaked out at carburetors. All you young guys, carburetors are easy. They really are. Don't worry about it. So that's why it has the carburetor hat off here because if it doesn't like go perfect, he's like, ting, checks out. So I got to come in and, and uh, save the day on the blow through carburetor. So I'm going to start working on this thing and uh, get it started up, running, set timing. I think Kyle's actually got that all done and it actually did have some little problem where it just shut off. And he's like, whoop, <laughs> that's it. So I, I jump in here and uh, he's over there working on a, a SMX. And uh, so I'm gonna dyno this thing and I'll show you some stuff about it too. Alrighty, so we got it started up and you've seen that we took the carburetor hat off of it and this is a, a, a Pro Systems carburetor and I use Pro Systems all the time. Patrick's a friend of mine and this one, it was leaking uh, fuel out of the plugs on top of the metering block only when you had pressurized because so you understand what's going on here uh, if you don't know blow through carburetor it is Everything in the carburetor, including the bowls, is pressurized. It has whatever pressure is right here that the blower is making is in the bowls, in the metering blocks, inside the body of the carburetor, obviously. Okay, so uh, what tends or what can happen is if you have any kind of little thing there and these little soft plugs that are in top of the metering block just had, they just seeped and so fuel was just running out of here. So no big deal. Uh, call up Patrick and says, "Oh, that's we, my bad. Sorry. We'll you know make it right with you, uh, but uh, just go ahead and epoxy the top of those. That's what we would do if it was here." So okay, cool. So we've now epoxy that thing, and uh, so now carburetor is all uh, ready to go. This is the base jetting of where he's got it at. Um, since we're looking for 1,200 horsepower, is what we're looking for. Um, really shouldn't have to lean on this very hard. This is a really sweet spot for these dual needle and seat bowl carburetors. So, because you can't flow enough fuel through one needle and seat, you have to have two needle and seats in order to flow enough fuel. So, just a little FYI. Oh, something that people always get to, they have to do this all the time, is the surge valve. This is the surge valve, okay? So when you close the throttle on the in the carburetor or on a uh, throttle body, it doesn't matter what it is. All this boost needs to go somewhere, right? When this closes, it sees vacuum, so you need to hook this up into the intake manifold below your throttle body, below your throttle blades. So this opens up when this closes, sees vacuum, opens up this, dumps all the excess boost off that's going nowhere, right? Now on a carburetor deal, the fuel pressure regulator has to be referenced. Do not hook the carburetor, the uh, vacuum reference line to vacuum <laughs> for a carburetor. If you do that, it has this huge stumble. So you have to hook up the boost reference line to your uh, fuel pressure regulator to the carburetor hat. All right, uh, because like I said, if you hook it up down here, you have this real funny spot where it wants a bunch of fuel and that's 
dumping off all the boost right here. It's at part throttle, but it's still got some vacuum and it actually decreases fuel pressure and makes the fuel pressure low or fuel level lower. And it has this weird, and then goes wide open, right? When you have it hooked up correctly, fuel pressure regulator reference to hat for carburetor. It doesn't matter on EFI, you can tune it out of it on EFI. You cannot tune it out of it with a carburetor. A carburetor has to be hooked up to hat and then it'll, it'll roll right in and does everything like it's supposed to do it. So, uh, we just have the timing set. I already have the timing set exactly where I want it to be uh, on this particular engine. We just have it right at 28. And I leave it locked out at 28 because that's where uh, it wants to be. Uh, let's see, how do you say this? The, um, uh, this would be the same as basically taking out uh, half or three quarters of a degree per pound of boost. But since we don't need to have a bunch of horsepower at idle, a whole bunch of horsepower at 2000 RPM, we can just leave it at that locked out timing and it just runs at 28 degrees all the time. Could you possibly make a little more horsepower at part throttle? I suppose you could, but who cares? It's part throttle. Um, so you could you know, have the advance and have all that stuff in the distributor. But in general, I just put it at full, full timing all the time. Starts easy there, does everything nice there. It's a good safe number. I'll show you some plug reads here when we're all done. Um, and we will, uh, let's see here. Ding, ding, ding. See if there's anything else I need to talk about. I'll show you the uh, tune-up stuff. So we'll see how good this is. Typically, Patrick is really close, really good on the carburetor stuff, uh, obviously. And uh, uh, you know this this package level right here, they're like really spot on the money. Pretty rare, even I have to do a jet change on it. It's that good. So um, let's go make let's go start making some pulls. I'll show you how the process goes. So the first thing we're gonna do start up, warm it up. Just make a steady load. And what I'm doing there, when I'm doing the steady load and letting the dyno catch and learn, the dyno is actually learning where the load position is for XRPM they have programmed into it. So it takes just a little bit. The computer's learning, the dyno's learning where everything needs to be before we start doing a short sweep and then a longer sweep and then the longer sweep, yeah. Now what you're hearing here, you see that I'm actually, because it's stone cold, just came back from uh, overnight or whatever. And so I'm keeping it running because there's no choke <laughs> on a uh, blow through stuff. And I'll show you where you adjust the idle air screw to uh, make this better. So you can't have it so rich that it's just fogging you out all the time. So you gotta set the idle air screw when it's uh, up to operating temperature. Once this gets warm, you'll hear it just sit there and idle and I won't have to keep pumping fuel to it, keep going. All right, so the first thing we'll do here is, it's still just, it's up to operating temperature now. Everything's good. In fact, I'll go shut this water pump off. So it's up to operating temperature and it still wants, just doesn't want to idle real nice on its own. And, but if I just blip the throttle a little bit, it takes right off and it's fine. All right, now the first place that you'll start with this is just with the idle air screws. So this is the idle air screw right here. There's four of them, one on each corner. All right, and what we'll do is we would normally would do this with it just running, but I'm pretty sure I know where it's gonna be at. So we'll give this just a half a turn more on each one. So what this is doing is that is allowing this, uh, this is the, uh, let's see here, is it the fuel or the air that's right here? So it's air screw it is the air screw so uh, this is creating no no this is the other way around so this has got to be fuel because I'm getting more fuel so as I go out it's open a passenger passage making it bigger allowing it to take more fuel or put more fuel in it at idle idle only because once you get past a certain thr throttle blade position it stops using that that channel in the metering block okay so I just opened us up half turn that'll be cool now if it was, if it needs more than that, because as soon as you get to two turns out on your idle air screw, 
the passage usually is uh, you would just be exceeding the passage anyways and it does absolutely nothing. So if you have to go to two, more than two turns out, you actually change to the idle air bleed, which is up underneath this carburetor hat. All right, let me grab you a carburetor and I'll show you that. All right, so this is one of the multiple carburetors I have sitting around here. Uh, the outside, this one, this one, this one, and this one are the idle air bleeds. Now these are air bleeds. So the bigger the hole, the more air it puts in at idle. The smaller the hole, the least or the less air it puts in at idle. So if you had to go out more than two turns on your idle air screws, <laughs> you need to decrease your idle air bleed, forcing it to give it more fuel. All right. If it was the other way around, and it's just insanely rich, and you got these things out like a half a turn from all the way bottomed out. If it's just all the way in, turn out half a turn or whatever, and it's still just watering your eyes and it's just nasty, then you would have to go bigger on your idle air bleeds. All right. Now on this, uh, another thing, <clears throat> excuse me, other thing that you're going to notice and is, uh, it is just a carburetor, so it is not, um, it is not infinitely tunable. And so in order to get things to tip in and get things, every, everything just perfectly right. I've never had a carburetor. Maybe you are way better at it than I am. It's very possible. I've never had a carburetor that is like, doesn't smell a little bit rich and usually I leave them a little bit rich like that because it just helps the tip in tip in is like that first little bit of throttle just just a little bit that little bit of tip in when they're rich they go Wah! when they're just a tick lean sometimes the air would change and you go <laughs> you'd sneeze it's always better if the thing goes and it's a little bit rich than it does <laughs> and stalls and dies all right, so I always leave them a little bit rich. It's a much better thing to do. Uh, you don't have all the AE fuel uh, AE fuel compensations that you would in an EFI system. So back over here, uh, we'll check it now. Should be fine. It was just just slightly off, so that little bit of idle air screw adjustment will help us out. Okay, now you can hear. Sitting there idling on its own, about 1200 RPM, all nice. Uh, so, it's up there, I operate temperature, so we're all pretty good there. Timing set, um, fuel set. Now, we have that little tip in stuff, so we can hear here. And when carburetors are really nice, uh, and you have a little bit of fuel, extra fuel there, so they tip in good, they do exactly that take right off and they sound really nice, really crisp and clean. So now that we're up to operating temperature, I gotta uh, just do a steady load, get the dyno to catch it and learn exactly where it needs to be. Alrighty, so there you hear the dyno has uh, dyno has caught it. It's learned exactly what the position is. I'm gonna uh, change it up just a little bit. So let's go here. This is all kind of information that's not really part of your concern. I'm just gonna sweep it up to 5,500. All right. 
So we'll just come in here, uh, have the steady load there. Sounds good, sounds right. Uh, we'll just make a short sweep test real quick here, and then we'll go in. We'll just pull a spark plug up, take a look at it, kind of see what kind of horsepower it's making at uh, at this lower uh, lower numbers right through here, lower sweep. Uh, first hit makes 1200 horsepower at 50, 5500 RPM. So here is oil pressure, uh, 97 pounds. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see which one is oil pressure. Boost at there is 12 pounds of boost. So that's about right now this is a uh, a small solid roller camshaft that we do uh street roller so lower rpm uh street roller it'll run up to 7000 rpm no problem but typically we like to keep this thing in that 6500 to 7000 rpm range uh you can see through here let me get the axes matching here ding 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 synchronize there we go yeah, so our torque is, you know, yeah, good torque right there. 1,117 foot-pounds of torque. And that's where it starts crossing over and where we make 1,202 and still making 1,150 foot-pounds of torque. All the way down here at 2,700 RPM, it's making 675 foot-pounds of torque. 3,000 RPM, 714, 3,500, 780. So really... Uh, really good nice safe piece uh, so that looks good lots of oil pressure fuel pressure is good everything's happy there oil pressure fuel pressure yep all right and we still set seven pounds seven to ten seven to nine pounds depends this this we can run at about seven and a half pounds of fuel pressure right around there seems to be really good you can keep on raising the fuel pressure up until it wants to blow the needle and seed off so you can't i usually can't get in a bunch of over nine to ten psi would be the most but that'd be if we're running out of fuel in the bowl trying to get more fuel in the bowl this particular application this horsepower level everything's pretty cool so let's go in there just right away we've got uh you know pretty heavy load on it with uh just trying to uh, get the dyno to learn where it's at and then uh um just ran it up to 5500 here uh on another pull so we'll get a little bit of uh information off the spark plug just make sure everything is all good and kind of go off our afr now afrs i'm not showing you afrs here but like to be because they don't want to get in debates with people about afrs because there's you can tune it really rich you can tune it really lean depends on what timing depends where you're at I told you where we're at for timing but in general i would like to see these things be in the 12 to 1 right around there cruising that's it wide open throttle cruising they can be uh, leaner than that. Wherever they are happy cruising, don't care. Numbers irrelevant. Just make it happy. Um, but at wide open throttle, I like to be in that range. And we'll go look at what the spark plug looks like. Okay, let's go. All righty here. Now, I'll show you how to. Uh... That's fine. Now this is actually on the definitely on the safe rich side. I am a little bit lower than 12.0 to one here. Now, you can see the timing. It is burned that clean all the way down to about my fingernail, so that's fine. It's a little rich because it's, it's sooted up still. Got a little bit, probably a little too much idle time and a little too low RPM. That will probably clean up. In fact, it will clean up just a little bit, but that's a really good start for there. Uh, so now, um, I would usually also look at, uh, tends to pick on number, uh, Usually outside cylinders and number six for some reason. I think that's usually in the intake manifold of why it does that. So we'll actually go over to number six and look at that spark plug. 
Now, as soon as I get done with this, I'll check in the spark plug. I'm just gonna take the valve covers off. We got a nice pull on it, simple, easy. I'm just gonna go in and check the valve lash and make sure that everything is, you know, everything's set and nothing's weirded out and doing anything funny. Um, not gonna bother showing you that because right up here is gonna be a video. Now, if you don't see this video link up here, it's because you have, what did they not have hooked up, turned on? It's Notifi cards. It's cards, notifications. Sometimes it's a setting that you have on there that if it doesn't come up. Um, but there's a video link right here to how to adjust your valves. Show you those things hundreds of times. Show in video info cards. Show in video info cards. So you heard it right there from Nate. That is a hard plug. This thing even has uh, even has the dipstick tube, which race cars don't have dipstick tubes. <laughs> At least in my opinion. But that's what I told Tom Bailey once. He goes, well, how am I supposed to check the oil? See, don't check the oil. You replace the oil. You don't check it, you replace it. Change it. So, and it's hard to get with these set of dyno headers. This one's about, and yeah, this one's about the same. Timing is, yeah, right about there. Looks good. Still a little sooty. Now, the one thing you will always notice is that you get very defined lines and a lot of soot with regular pump gas fuel like from down at the gas station 91 93 octane um, that is just the way it is they have a lot of soot oh look at this oh i probably just broke that because this was hard to get out this is one of those things you gotta be careful of if you can see that crack right there i just i felt it and it's like oh what the heck the darn spark plug i broke that spark plug it's probably taking it out because you see me kind of jerking around with it and then spun it out by hand. Obviously, they broke it. There you go. So let me go grab another spark plug. All right, new spark plug. Now that's a that's a really good point to make. It is a uh, uh, very very common. If you have misfire, first thing, throw new spark plugs in it. I don't care what they look like. Throw new ones in it. They're cheap. Gives you a good verification of what's going on. Still misses. Check your spark plug wires. It is a few. If you go back and you watch, uh, you'd have to go back to last year of some struggles I've had in the wagon with just a random bad spark plug, a random bad spark plug wire, and big engines like that, 4,500 horsepower, 4,000 horsepower stuff. Uh, not that we're using that much horsepower in the car yet, but uh, when they make big horsepower, little things like that, broken spark plug like that, will cause havoc and can damage engines. Engines like this really doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. NA engines, really no big deal. But whenever you have problems, uh, always look at the, the spark plugs and spark plug wires. Kind of search through your ignition. But uh, it can be just as something as dead on as simple as that. Maybe, maybe your guy or your buddy took the spark plugs out and broke it. Happens all the time. Obviously, it's just happened to me. There you go. Now what it was looking for there was just to make sure that it looked pretty much the same as that other spark plug on number seven over there. Uh, number seven is a long runner. Number six is a short runner on the intake manifold. Usually if you have a problem, it seems to be in those two. Sometimes it'll come up here in the number two, uh, number two or number one. So that looks good. Now I'm just gonna lash up the valves.
Now, what you saw me do right there was, I was letting it idle down, and it was still, it was still just a tick lean, because it was just hunting a little bit in the in the idle RPM, and so I just went in there. And one of the quickest things that you can do is to see if it needs more fuel or less fuel is when it's sitting there idling, hit the accelerator pump. That's exactly what I was doing. I was showing you. And you're squirting a little bit of fuel in it. And if it revs up, you're too lean. If it revs down, you're too rich. So I ended up putting another half turn in it. I'm, now I'm up to two turns on that thing. So if I, got to, if I had to do anything more than that, I would have to decrease the idle air bleed in order to make it richer. Okay, so you heard it right there. It uh, it only it made speed horsepower at 5500, and then just uh, laid right over like crazy. That is my fuel pressure line. Obviously, there's something wrong with that. <laughs> this is uh, yeah, engine RPM. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go in there and gonna see what's going on with, a, with my uh, fuel pressure and see what else is going on here. Yeah. Normally helps if you check the fuel to make sure you actually have fuel as it is empty. <laughs> Apparently I didn't put very much fuel in it when we did this thing. So obviously just ran out of fuel. No problem. That is the easy thing to fix. All better? All better. So that a uh, little bit of smoke off that header is because that stupid dipstick tube is just a stock dip, dipstick tube. I'll definitely get him a locking low car style dipstick or something better than that. That is a, it probably is peeled up just a little bit and shot a little spot of oil over there. Then obviously this is too much horsepower. Um, it's probably making a little too much boost. So it's probably if I had to guess, it might be upwards of 17 or so. Let me see here. Yeah, still nice flat, broad torque curve all the way through here. So let's go look and see where our stuff is at. Oh, looks like we need to. Our oil pressure drops off a little bit here, up to 88 pounds of oil pressure from 94 and it's not a big swing it's just the way it's scaled um but it might be just a might be a like a half a quart short of oil or so so like i said the scaling makes it look funny let me get this one to synchronize scales too there you go that's what the oil pressure curve looks like on a better scale and it is dipping up over right there so i think i'll just add like about a quart of half a quart of oil to it uh, fuel pressure looks nice and linear. See how that's a nice flat line now? Not stupid looking. And yep, we made 17.5 pounds of boost. So, uh, too much, too much boost. I need, we need to knock that down. Uh, I wouldn't want it running there all the time. 
uh, well, we we can go in there and we can see that everything would be cool, it wouldn't be a problem. It actually is making too much horsepower. Uh, too much horsepower for the pump gas I want to run in it. I don't like to do that. I would like to have it no more than 15 pounds. I like to have it in that 12 to 15 pounds of total boost, 12, 14 pounds total boost at like 6,500 RPM, which will make a nice solid 1,200 horsepower. But 1,370 fish right around there is, is a little hot. Uh, I don't want... Uh, I don't want them to break something, especially, I mean, we can over deliver all day long. Making power is not the problem. Keeping things alive is the problem. Pump gas, non-intercooled. Uh, can it run there? Yes. Would it run there for, would it have more uh, tendency to get hurt there? Absolutely. So I'm going to have to, uh, I, got a, I got a 58 tooth pulley up on top. I'm going to have to go down and pulley on the bottom. So... Uh, let me see if I got something around here to do that. Alrighty, so I just changed the bottom pulley. I didn't have the one I wanted Because uh, I don't have as many pulleys here as I used to um, And unfortunately, I don't have the correct belt So you're gonna see the belt is like a looser than what it should be. So don't panic. It's, a, it's all right Because I'm not centered out that way. Uh, I'm just gonna get the correct length belt for it so we can uh, get this better um, Anyways, so I'm gonna run this thing up here now this is a four tooth change. Now typically what we should see is about, in this application, about a pound and a half per tooth up to two pounds, but usually it's a pound and a half-ish per tooth of uh, increase or de decrease. So you change the, pu the pulley tooth count, one tooth, and it should go up a pound and a half a boost. So hopefully we're gonna go down, so four, times one and a half would be six, which should get us to 11 or 12. So we'll see what it does right there. Uh, I was gonna just put a 75 tooth pulley on it instead of a 73, and that would uh, obviously give me two, which would have put me down in there and at like 14 to 15 pounds, but this will definitely put me down pretty close to 11 or 12. seem right what the heck let's see here did i miss something dang let me that is really that is really interesting hmm it's interesting, it made the same peak number out here, but it is lower everywhere else. So if you look right here, this green line, greenish line, is power before with the other pulley. And this new line is down here. Now, it, that is a 50 horsepower decrease right there at like a 58 pretty close 6,000 RPM, but it just carries out farther out here where before it just kind of laid over right there. Um, pretty much all the same through here. Boost, fuel pressure, oil pressure is fine. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. It makes basically the same boost. Three tenths of a pound different. Four thousand RPM. It is uh, three, six, nine tenths. Nine tenths of a pound. So less than a pound different there. And then at five thousand, it is pound and it keeps on. It gets wider and wider as it goes apart. Interesting. Um, but still makes 15 pounds of boost. All right. 
and it still makes really good horsepower but you can see up here it just is carrying out farther now why does it carry out farther it carries out farther because we just we're in a little bit different part of the map so uh there's always uh negligible returns i mean you always hit a spot in the engine a spot in the in the can uh, in the blower map of where it starts taking more horsepower drive than boost it creates so it's negative returns you can't think about that way this is not a negative return on the blower because the blowers will make more horsepower than this usually with the inlet bell i don't have any inlet bell and i'm sucking directly off the header really similar to what it would be in the car um so all of those things would make it better and now i'm really think i'm really figuring out what i want to do here uh because i really uh, want to make less horsepower uh, it's still making a little more but that is on the max side the boost that I want to see it is definitely making max horsepower that I want to see so I want to tame this down some more uh, we could obviously take out some timing um, I could get it down to more like 24 degrees of timing and uh, take a little bit of power out of that way but let me see if I can come up with a different pulley combination and a belt that I happen to have in stock uh, let me see what I can do. Alrighty, so we managed to make less horsepower. How about that? Uh, got it down in the range I wanted to be. 6,500, 1,260 horsepower, 1,036 foot-pounds of torque at 6,000 RPM. <clears throat> Alright, let's take a look at actual numbers. Alright. How's our boost? Yeah, our boost is still uh, 15 point, uh, yeah, 15 point, where'd it go? Hold on. Oh, there's, they were missing here. What's going on? That is the, the previous pull. Uh, where did that just go? What in the French toast? Yeah, it's not Should be there. Over five. Yeah, it's not there. What the heck? Uh, hmm. It loaded it up there. You don't have to open new runs in the file? No. Uh, let's see if you go to new run. It's number which five. is what we do. It's on number five, but it already did number five. I didn't save it. Maybe it's right there. Alright, there you go. Okay, it's there. Okay, close. Nope. What in the heck? What's going on here? Alright. All right, so one of the nice things about the your dyno system here, not giving, well, I am giving them a plug, but it's not, it's for no other reason than they're just helping me out. <laughs> so, uh, is that I just called him. He's in, I think he's in Norway. So he just picked up, it's got to be almost 11 o'clock at night there. And he just picked up and he goes, oh, idiot. Well, he didn't call me an idiot, but I'm sure that's what he's just thinking. You got to hit save and close. You can't hit dismiss. So anyways, this is the, <laughs> here it is. Everything's all cool, so I'll hide this. That We finally got our number five up there. All right. And that is 1260, 1036. There we go. And that was at 12.69, 12.72 pounds of boost. And, oh, you know, I still haven't added that stupid oil. I keep on forgetting. 
So it's down to 80 pounds of oil pressure versus uh, 96. So I'll get I got to add some oil to it. Now again, uh, if you haven't ever heard me talk talk about this, um, I actually might not add that to it. Maybe I will. I don't know. But it's a function of the engine dyno because there is no or nothing. Oil pans and systems are designed to be accelerating, hence pushing oil back towards the pickup tube. And in a dyno, it's just sitting there static and it, very, very, very common that you have to add oil to it on the engine dyno that you don't have to add to it on track. So you see this on the engine dyno, uh, you don't see this on the track. Uh, but anyways, uh, super happy with it. Right there, that's where it needs to be. Uh, I just I still got to get the uh, proper length belt for it and uh, um, it's in a nice safe spot I did take out another uh, uh, we're down to 24 degrees of timing so I've taken more timing out I'm trying to slow it down even more and uh, but this is a really nice good safe spot for it um, feel good now that is a now this is only you're only seeing this in a matter of 15 minutes or so Swap employees and doing a little carburetor stuff and a little bit of trinkety stuff here. Uh, I guess uh, all things said and done, I've been at this for, uh, well, all said and done from start to finish. It's about, it's at least a one day deal, about 10 hours to do. Tuning here was only about an hour and a half or so. So if that's pretty rare. It's nice to have some stuff go real well for you. Uh, so that is a nice, good, but this is where we started. I mean, this is this was bread and butter way back in the day. This is where I built all, built a reputation of being able to do that based off of this. So, uh, you know, all those kind of things. So, anyways, this is a nice package, good solid deal for Guy Thomas, and uh, I hope he enjoys this thing. I think everything's good. Uh, now we'll just go through and we just check the valve lash one more time, do a cranking compression check, make sure everything's all cool. Uh, cause every time I've ever sent one out and I have sent some out that we didn't do that every once in a while, I got one that's got some random problem that you didn't catch. So we want to make sure that we catch any kind of things there, but this is a really good solid platform, uh, for 1200 plus horsepower, big block Chevrolet pump gas. Anyways, I'm Steve Morris. We can, we can go over there. Oh, Kyle's somewhere around here. We could, we can tell him I took care of the, the carburetor engine for him. And, oh, here comes, here comes Kyle. Come here, Kyle. <laughs> what are you going to do to me? It's all right, man. I, I took care of this carbureted engine for you. Right. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Steve Morris. That's Kyle Morris. That's Dubert Morris. Dude. See you later.